question lane. Solving problems through the process of questions and answers. We're going to get directly into the book. What do you mean when you say that the South had a morbid preoccupation with sex? They did. They did. What do you uh, mean? Listen, I looked at mentions, there were a few mentions of white people, of white men. Not many. I'm talking about Florida. I don't class class over the But there were a few instances where white men were mentioned for their cattle wrestling and even murder and such. But not very many. But I didn't find a single instance in which a white man was sexually mutilated, made to eat his testicles, uh, where his private parts were to spread around as souvenirs of the event. That didn't happen to white victims of lynchings. It did happen to some black victims of lynchings, particularly those who were accused of assaulting or insulting white men. So if you go back to even the slavery, when slaves were disembarked from slave ships, um, black men were described in terms of their ability to be strong bucks, to be able to work hard, to be able to deliver on, on, on the kind of labor needs that whites had. And of course, they were standing there naked. So their journals were evaluated and, and compared. So there was a preoccupation with black sexuality. Uh, black men were considered to be sexual beasts. Uh, white women were considered to be, I mean, black women, women were considered to be exotic somehow or another, loose sexually and what have you. So yes, there were these preoccupations with sex among whites that translated into anti-black violence. The morbid preoccupation with sex that uh, Southerns had. Would, it, would you think it would be more accurate to replace the word South, I mean, the word South with white, when you say the South was morbid preoccupied with sex? No, you could, I, I think, I think that it was beyond the South. I think that there was the same sort of attitude about black sexuality uh, throughout the country. It's just that in the South, um, where 80% of the black people lived until the Great Migration of the 1930s and 40s, uh, Southern whites were more closely in physical contact with blacks. And so these stereotypes and, uh, were more easily spread and adopted in the South. Plus the fact that there was such close physical proximity between whites and blacks in the South, there was more opportunity for conflict. Um, more opportunities for blacks to get in trouble with uh, confronting white people or not obeying the social mores. So no, I have no illusions about whites in Boston, for example, or New York, or anyplace else, um, having racial attitudes that were not all that different from the South, particularly including sexual attitudes about blacks. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead in the book a bit. Uh, former Florida governor, Sidney Katz, who was in office from oh, 1917 yes. to 1921, mm -hmm. he insisted that the Negro is an inferior race. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, why was education for Negroes so staunchly opposed by him if they were inferior? Well, for, for one thing, that was a view among whites at that time that blacks uh, did not need to be educated, uh, that their jobs were going to be in the field, that their jobs were going to be taking care of babies for white people. They were going to be basically menial laborers. So why would a black person need a high school degree or, uh, or a diploma, much less a college degree? So blacks were stratified in terms of their expectations to participate in the labor market, such that there was a sense among whites that they didn't need to be educated. Plus, educated blacks would be competing with white folks for the jobs that were considered to be white jobs. So back in those days, you had what was considered colored work, which meant work that required you to sweat, and white work, which was work that didn't require you to sweat. So um, that, that was basically the view about education. And, and that extends back into slavery where there was a realistic expectation that a, a slave who was able to read and write was dangerous. Uh, and they were dangerous. And for this reason, uh, it was against the law in some states to, uh, to, to teach a black person to read and write. And the few who did manage during slavery to read and write were done so usually secretly by their uh, owners or by uh, mistresses or the children of their owners. So. The, the suppression of black education uh, began from the moment they stepped on slave ships um, up until and through the 1960s, when finally federal court orders broke down racial barriers in, in education.
In Governor Katz's response to lynching in March 1919 to the NAACP, he replied that the white citizenship will not stand for indictment of racist vigilantes. Mm -hmm. Is that not exactly what is going on today on modern day all white juries as what we would call jury nullification? Well, yes, there's still some of that. As a matter of fact, that is why we had the race riot in Miami in 1980. Uh, there was an all-white, all-male jury in Tampa, Florida, that convicted. Uh, that I'm sorry, that uh, uh, that found uh, uh, white men, police officers, who had beaten an innocent black man to death, not guilty. An all-white jury. Um, but you know, a classmate of mine, Judge Wilkie Ferguson, who was a federal judge at the time that he made this ruling or or influenced this ruling, he was an appellate judge, state judge here. Uh, and in the aftermath of the McDuffie decision, rendered by an all-white jury, uh, Judge Ferguson was able to get the courts of Florida to adopt a, a standard that race could not be used as a basis to exclude people ex to exclude people from serving on juries. So you have a less likelihood of having all-white juries hearing racially sensitive cases today than in 1980 when the McDuffie jury fit this, this, this model and uh, in its decision caused 18 people in Miami to die. Most of them were black. Okay. You know, can I just say something about Sydney Katz? Yeah, get on the former governor. <laughs> Sydney was, uh, he was dangerous. He, he was not unusual in the fact that he was a racist. It's just that as governor, with the resp responsibility as the chief executive of the state to protect all of his citizens, he didn't. And beyond that, he even encouraged anti-black violence by saying, well, if somebody insulted my daughter or attacked uh, my wife, uh, I'd get a gun and blow his brains out too. But this is the go governor of the state of Florida saying that if, if I if, am uh, in that situation, I would do the same thing that any God-fearing white man would do. So he was not just racist, he advocated anti-black violence. And even though we had other racist governors, there were a few who actually came out and did what Sidney did. And that's why I find him to have been the most solid, the most dangerous governor we've ever had in Florida. Speaking of uh, politicians and law enforcement officers, are you familiar with the uh, Blue Lives Matter movement? Yes. Okay. Tangentially, yes. Recently, uh, there's been uh, quite a few past laws in certain states, for example, Louisiana, uh, which makes an attack on an officer tantamount to a hate crime. So um, if an officer is uh, attacked in any way, shape, or form, they are compared to uh, protected classes who were previously attacked in uh, previous years and currently as well, such as African-Americans, gays, uh, Jews, etc. Mm. Does laws such as uh, these Blue Lives Matter laws harken back to uh, Governor Katz's suggestion in 1919 that blacks would not be uh, lynched as much if they did not kill white officers? Uh, well. First of all, um, police lives do matter. Um, I respect police officers who carry out their duties in a professional way. I can only imagine how chaotic any society would be if you didn't have police officers. I don't agree that you should classify an attack against a police officer as a hate crime. That's far too global in the uh, uh, use of that term. Uh, hate crimes ought to be restricted to those groups that have been specifically singled out to be attacked because of their race or their sexual orientation. Uh, so I think it's much too broad a use of the term. But I have a lot of trouble with folks who just blanketly come out and say all cops are bad. Uh, we don't need cops. Because I've seen, listen, I was out there when, when the 1980 riot happened. I saw what could happen when there's no police officer present for a day. And it's, it was not pretty. I saw white people being killed in the streets by black young men with hundreds of people, including myself, watching. 
and nobody doing anything about it. So I think, unfortunately, the Blue Lives Matter movement arose in, in contradiction to the Black Lives Matter movement, and that's too bad because black lives do matter and black lives are more at risk of, of danger from overreacting reactive police officers or racist police officers. So unfortunately, the two things have become commingled in a way that I think is unfortunate. But I do want to make the point that there's no, there's no advantage to be gained in assuming that all or even most police officers um, are dangerous and that we don't need cops because we do. I just want to establish that there is a pattern of behavior and practices by uh, people who identify themselves as white as it relates to black people will get less mistreated if they would avoid harming white officers. This goes back to Sydney Katz days and this goes back to today. That's I'm just trying. Well, to no, no, you're absolutely right. No, I, let me you, you to listen. The main reason for black lynchings in Florida and possibly beyond Florida, the thing that would get you lynched even before were raping a white woman who was killing a police officer. White simply would not stand for that. A black person who would kill a cop, who would attack a law enforcement officer, was considered to be so beyond the pale of law that that person deserved to be killed. So the view that an attack on a police officer was especially uh, inciting of violence against black people, not just the person believed to have done it, but against black folks in general is very, very true. So technically, I guess it is true. If, but see, a lot of the accusations that blacks attack and kill white police officers was based on a lie. It didn't happen. Um, I could give you a number of examples, including what happened in, in, in Okoli, Florida, 1920, when uh, the view among whites was that some black uh, people, uh, led, headed by a guy named July Perry, who had tried to vote, and uh, this led to this confrontation at July Perry's house. Uh, you had these black men inside the home shooting out, protecting themselves, and surrounded uh, by a white mob, and two white men got killed. Uh, both of them were law enforcement officers. And as it turned out, they didn't get killed by the blacks inside the house. The white folks shot them by shooting through the house. But the riot was caused, in addition to the voting dispute, by the word getting out that excuse me, the niggas had killed two law enforcement officers. Nothing set white folks off like that, even uh, alleged assaults on white women, like the rumor or the actuality that a black person killed a law, officer, law enforcement officer. The last lynching in Dade County in Homestead was, in, was around that very issue. And Willie Gray asked them, the black man did kill a white constable. It wasn't any question about that. He killed him. He shot him. Uh, and that led to his lynching and that of two other people at the time. So sometimes there were instances in which confrontation between black people with the police led to a police officer being killed or shot. Uh, but often the, the anti-black violence after that swept up a lot of other people who had nothing to do with it. We're definitely going to get back to the Oki uh, riot. Okoye, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okoye with uh, July Perry. Definitely going to get back to that. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay up to date for more videos by clicking the bell notification icon and following our social media. For any of the people, groups, companies, or videos that were referenced in this video, don't forget to check the description and or the pinned comment section. The Question Lane, solving problems through the process of questions and answers.